In fact, he opened the way for us so that we could enter in. So what did he say? He said, the, uh, Paul said, let us come boldly into the presence of the Lord through a new, but it's a living way. Not by way of dead sacrifice. Most people think that your worship comes because Jesus Christ died on the cross. No, no, no. That's not the whole story. The whole story is much, much more than the fact that he died on the cross. As a matter of fact, our redemption was not complete at Calvary. It was not even complete in the tomb. It was only complete not even in that resurrection. But it was after he had left this earthly scene and returned to the Father. He opened the way into the presence of the living God for us. So it is here. So it says now, let's see, just for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through the chapter, just a few verses. It says in verse 11, uh, sorry, verse 10, the Levites that are gone away from me, when Israel went astray, they went astray from me after their idols, and they even they will bear their iniquity. Yet they will be ministers of, in my sanctuary. They'll be ministers in my sanctuary, having charge at the gates of the house. They shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before the people to minister unto them. And that's the sum total of much ministry in the world today. It's a ministry to the people. I'm not ministering to the people here today. It, God has put a word in my heart and in obedience to that word I'm ministering unto the Lord. You see, not to the people. I minister to the Lord. Why? Because He was the one that told me, this is what I want you to say. This is what I want you to do this afternoon. So I'm ministering unto the Lord. I'm doing the will of my Father. And anybody that ministers, whether you sing or play an instrument or whatever you do, it must be unto the Lord. And not just to entertain or to make people or whatever. Because he said, if you do, if you do minister to the people, it's because you have not yet come to the place where you can follow me into the sanctuary of the Lord because that's where you worship God. And you can't go into that sanctuary as a mortal human being. You can't go into that sanctuary unless you are in the Spirit. For it's in the Spirit that you can have access unto the Father. The most holy place. When you come in there, you have stepped out of this world. You have, lived, you have gone up, if you like. You have ascended the mountain of the Lord. Amen. And it's in that place of spiritual experience that you stand in the presence of God. So it says here, um, whoa, over the page. So it says here, because they ministered unto them before their idols, they caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Therefore have I lifted up my hand against them, saith the Lord, and they will bear their iniquity. 
and they shall not come near unto me. Amen. You hear this? He said, unless you are walking in the Spirit, unless you have done with all that other religious stuff, he said, you will not come near unto me, but you will be ministers in the sanctuary. You can go out and slay the bullet. Yeah, get messed up while they wrestle with that thing. And you cut his throat and then you go, you know, okay. And he said, Thou not come near unto me to do the office of a priest unto me, nor to come near to the holy things. You'll be excluded unless you can come in the spirit into the sanctuary of the Lord. But the priest, verse 15, but the priest of Zadok, uh, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, that kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray, they will come near unto me. Amen. And they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Lord. And they shall enter into my sanctuary and they will come near to my table to minister unto me, and they will keep my charge. Hallelujah. So you see, there are conditions that apply if we want to enter into the sanctuary of the Lord. So Abraham is ascending and he's taking Isaac with him. And when they get to the top of that mountain, it says here, he built an altar. The first thing you will have to do if you want to worship God is build an altar. When, is it, um, when Elijah challenged the priests of Baal, he built an altar to challenge the priests of Baal. And he took the stones that had all been knocked down, destroyed, the altar had been destroyed. As far as Israel was concerned, they weren't interested in it. He built the altar before he could do anything else. You have to build the altar. How do you build the altar? Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. And verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They don't belong to this world. Paul said we're not fighting against flesh and blood. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Beloved, one of the things that is keeping us from worship, keeping us out of the sanctuary of the Lord, are the strongholds in our life. That is, the enemy has got certain issues with us in there. And within us are these strongholds. This is one of them. The carnal mind is a stronghold. There are many religious strongholds whereby the law is brought to us and challenges us in certain things that are in our lives. And then, of course, you can't go into the presence of the Lord because, you see, the Lord won't let you. 
strongholds. 